I'll go ahead and shut the door now. Now we're talking about the uh, the blade tension indicator. The blade tension indicators are just that. They're an indicator of the blade tension. They're not an actual physical gauge like you might uh, clamp onto the blade. And that's really all you need for this size and range of bandsaw. In order to set the, uh, the tension properly, you're going to go through and get it to the, uh, the right indicator mark on the, uh, on the tension indicator scale. And this is a three quarter inch blade, so we're going to set it to three quarter. Now in order to set it, you're going to set the tension using this handle. And what I find is easiest is to release the tension using the lever on the back, which takes the pressure off the wheel, makes it, making this uh, knob easy to adjust, and then reapplying the tension and to see where it comes on the scale. So right now I've got it set at three eighths of an inch. If I want to take that back up to three quarters of an inch, again, I'll release the tension and rotate the knob. Reapply the tension to see where it comes on the scale and it's sitting at the three quarter inch line right now. While we're talking about blade tension, it's always good to check the actual tension on the blade by pushing with your thumb right here on the inside of the, uh, the frame of the, uh, the bandsaw. And with moderate pressure, you want about a quarter inch deflection on this blade. And that'll be the way that you actually kind of verify the setting. Uh, I've heard a lot of people discuss blade tension and different methods to go through and set blades. I've heard of people loosening the bandsaw blade until it flutters and then retightening it. I really don't like that. I don't advise uh, that type of method. I wouldn't run my car with low tires and I wouldn't run a bandsaw with a loose blade on it. So go through, set your tension on the blade first, verify it with the indicator, verify it with your thumb test and you're good to go. While we're covering blade installation, we've set the uh, tension. The next step is to go through and set the tracking. And the tracking is the position of the blade forward and back as it sets on the wheel of the bandsaw. And there's a knob on the back here called the tracking knob. And what I like to do is with the saw unplugged and the power off on the saw is to go through and rotate the blade and see how the blade is, uh, is laying on the wheels. It may move a little bit. And on an initial setup of the bandsaw, you may have to go through and take the tension off of the saw a little bit to go through and make some coarse uh, adjustments just to keep the blade somewhat centered. Now I notice that my blade is riding a little bit toward the back and I can see that through the opening right here and I can also see it through the window that's provided on the side here for bandsaw blade tracking. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and rotate the blade and adjust the knob and walk that blade forward just until it's centered on the wheel. Uh, the bandsaw tires in this one are just ever so slightly crowned. You want to run all your blades right in the middle of the crown of the, of the tire. On a wider blade like this, you'll have it centered on the wheel, and on the smaller blades, you'll see that they center themselves right on the crown of the tire. Let's go ahead, spin the wheel here by hand, and adjust that blade forward. And here's the tracking knob. There's uh, the tracking knob itself, and this is the lock knob. So we're going to loosen the lock knob so we have room to position our knob. And when you rotate the knob counterclockwise, it'll actually walk the blade forward on the wheel and when you rotate this clockwise it'll move the blades backwards on the wheel. It's important when you're doing this setup at least for the first time to go through and set this tracking by hand, spinning the wheel by hand and not with the saw running. If the wheel is really badly misadjusted and you started the saw it might shoot the blade off and you can have some problems with that. So let's go ahead and do it by hand. I'm going to go ahead and walk that blade forward watching through the window spinning it by hand and then just gradually turning the knob to move the blade forward. So it's moved it forward. I'm going to walk it back just a little bit. I've gone a little bit too far. So let's go ahead and that's pretty much right and right on center. I like where it's setting right now. I'm going to go back and relock that lock knob and we're ready to go. Now when you're looking through the window you can see that that blade is correctly centered on the wheel. It should be right in the middle. Now you'll find these instructions for installing the blade, setting the tension and the tracking on pages 30 and 31 of your owner's manual. The next step is not really covered that well in the manual, but I do want to go through it. It's an important step and it's squaring the table to the blade. And we're going to do that with the trunnions and setting the trunnion pointer. So let's follow along as we go through and adjust the table to be square to the blade that we've just installed. Now the first step is to reinstall this lock handle that we removed when we put our table on. It'll simply slide right into the slot on the side of the table here and then lock into position. And it can be ratcheted to go into just about any position that you need to. This little knob ties both halves of the table together to keep them smooth and flat during normal saw operations. And it can be removed when doing a blade change and then just reinserted to make your table 
smooth and flat. Now the next step is to check the angle between the blade and the table. Just take a handy square, put it on the table and bring it up to the blade and you can see that we've got a gap at the bottom and it's tight at the top and that lets us know that our table angle is tilted off. We're going to make the adjustment on the far side. There's the bolt that we had on the opposite side here. We're going to go through and adjust that until we get this exactly at 90 degrees. And once that's set, there's a lock nut that will tighten down. Let's go ahead and adjust the bolt and bring this into 90 degrees. Make sure that as you're making any table adjustments that the lock handles for the table trunnions are in the loose position. Now back off the lock nut so that it's out of the way and then adjust this with a wrench. This is a number 14 wrench until your square is exactly 90 degrees to the blade. And continue checking as you're making the adjustments until you've got it perfectly square to the blade. Once the table is square to the blade, go ahead and bring the lock nut back up to the bottom of the table and then tighten it down with a wrench. Now your 90 degree stop is set and every time you go back to 90 degrees, you'll be in the perfect position. Once you've verified that your table and blade are at 90 degrees, you're going to set the pointer on the trunnion to read right here on the zero line. So take a screwdriver, loosen the screw, and then rotate your pointer up and align it exactly on the zero mark. That'll let you make precise adjustments when you need to tilt it away from the 90 degree mark. You can go through and read all the way out through 10, 20, up to 45 degrees. Now that we've got the table adjusted to where it's 90 degrees square to the blade and while we still have our square out, we're going to check the fence. Let's go ahead and lock down our table using these trunnion lock handles here. Make sure you don't crank down too tight on those. I've seen some people way over tighten those and it can distort things. Even though those trunnions are widely spaced for the uh, uh, maximum support of the table, you can crank down on them too much to uh, distort the table. So uh, just simply secure those handles. Let's take the square. We'll come over and measure it to the fence and you'll just simply come over, check your fence to make sure that it's 90 degrees to the table. And it should be pretty darn close set from the factory. They set these things uh, pretty close by going through and machining and milling the table and machining the brackets here. If you do need to adjust this to be 90 degrees to the table uh, away from any factory settings, you may find just a little bit of uh, adjustment here in the bar. Not much because there's not too much play in the bar. If you have to make any adjustments, you'll simply loosen the three bolts that are right here in the uh, bracket for the, uh, the fence to the knuckle. You'll loosen those and you may have to go through and install a, a shim in there, a real thin shim stock to do that. Before you check and set that and make that measurement, make sure that this lock knob is locked down. That'll make sure that the fence is actually in the operation position. Then you make your measurement and then make any adjustments needed from there. In the off chance that you do need to make a shim adjustment on this, you would simply loosen these bolts and the party line right here. You'd install a shim in this area. The secondary area that you can do it is by loosening these knobs and making it between the fence and the bracket itself.